Ratcliffe with a low cross, difficult for Beersley, but he made something of it. Oh, against the underside of the bar from Cotty. It was a move that deserved a goal. Two sharp strikers responding in tandem then. Now Ratcliffe. Ward screening it well, inviting Sheedy to come forward. It's an early cross from Ratcliffe. And Sergi's header drops only as far as Beardsley. He looks for a bit of magic here with Cotty, and Torsvet plucked it out of the air. Dave Watson takes the free kick that Huffle gave away. Sam Ways almost overdoing it. Stewart's there to help out. Tottenham true to their tradition, trying to pass the ball forward. But it's been a little costly for them. And another effort from Cotty. Beardsley, Cotty called for it. Mavitt responded well enough. Ebrill, Peter Beardsley is onside. Cotty's in the middle for the goal. Roger Milford knocked across at the linesman and saw no flag. And the writing had been on the wall for Tottenham. Smiles on the Everton bench. Everton lead. That lead was nearly taken from them. his old club with an instant reply. Cotty uh, muscling Mavitt out of the way. Mavitt didn't like it. He's even more worried now. Beardsley looking for something crafty. And it is a combination here of stealth up front and speed as well. And the strength coming from midfield. Allen, Lineker darting in again. It's in this time. It is 1-1. One, one. It's awkward for Mavert and Tuttle. Vashika. It's a difficult ball to defend against, and it rather slewed behind off David Tuttle. He seems to be trying to get it back out for a throw. It's a corner, though. A few better at taking them from the left than she did. From the right, rather, with the left foot. Watson claiming that it's a penalty, and it's given. David Watson shoved aside. in by Cotty. He's got two, Everton have got two. No offside, and Cotty prevented from getting a hat-trick by Torsvet racing off his line. We've only had 25 minutes played, and Tony Cotty is running free by Shika. He's got to uh, place the cross here. Oh, and Torset not dealing with it decisively. Retrieved by Mark Ward. Everton with plenty of players in the centre. Everill. He can use Ward again if he wants, which he does. Ratcliffe. And Vashika, there's no flag. Tottenham all over the place again. Yes! It is the hat-trick. Tony Cotty, inside the opening half an hour, has grabbed himself three goals at the expense of Spurs. That's caught on the wind. Tuttle judged it well. Oh, Everett will also judge the shot, finally.
leads with uh, four players inside the penalty area. Sterling, the long one, towards the near post. And Chapman doesn't get there. Here's Hodge, and the first goal is scored by Steve Hodge. It was a bit of a daisy cutter, and it bobbled through, and Steve Hodge makes the early breakthrough on five minutes. And a free kick is going to be awarded against Phil Kite here for kicking the ball from outside his area. And that free kick really is down to the linesman on the far side, Gareth Davis. I think Sterling might whack it in hard. He does and he scores! And Sterling maintains his astonishing record of taking it out on Sheffield United. Delightfully done by McAllister. He saw the space. Look at the pass as well. It's gone out to speed. Forward goes Dorigo into the Sheffield penalty area. It's a penalty. Brought down by Ian Bryson. And Leeds have the chance to go three up. Sterling and McAllister arguing about who is to take the penalty. Sterling says, I take them. It's to be hoped from Leeds' point of view, he scores. He does. And it's 3 0. Chapman, speed, must be number four for Steve Hodge. And how simple it was. Two for Hodge, two for Sterling, four goals in 47 minutes. And Leeds are running riot with the match. Here's Whitehouse's cross. Oh, and there's a firm header and a goal from Jamie Hoyland. So, Sheffield United have some joy at last. A cracking header from Jamie Hoyland, and it certainly makes the scoreline more respectable. Shot for Leeds. Oh, and the back pass. Oh, it's left Tony Garner, and he can make it 4-2 here, and he has done. So another consolation for Sheffield United. Well, who knows, 14 minutes to go, and they're back in it at 4-2. But Gannon's free kick invites a header. Lukic punches it down. Bradshaw scores for Sheffield United. And it's Leeds 4, Sheffield United 3 now. What a remarkable turnaround this is. And Carl Bradshaw celebrates his first appearance of the season with a goal. Chelsea becoming predictably unpredictable. They're tenacious when behind, suspiciously fragile when in front. Beautiful footwork there by Kerry Dixon to set up Graham Lasso for the first. Poor defending by Arsenal standards, let them in for a second. This time Lasso was the provider, Kevin Wilson the scorer, and Chelsea were well and truly in command. The game turned when Vinnie Jones was adjudged to have handled the ball, although he and all the Chelsea defenders close by strenuously deny any contact was made. Lee Dixon, who took the throw, also took the penalty. They equalised following Anders Limpar's corner. Ian Wright's touch was just enough to deflect it past Hitchcock for his fifth goal in three games since moving from Crystal Palace. Arsenal's winner and our first goal of the day contender by Kevin Campbell powerful stuff to cap a great fight back by the reigning champions with their 26th goal in the league this season now that's good going King into space for Paul Williams Eric Young shadowing him David Hurst in the middle Hurst now on a run Worthington into space well Nigel Worthington said goal scoring wasn't a habit but in successive games, the Irish international really has discovered how sweet a bulging back of the net can be. Only as far as Southgate. Looks for Thomas. Cut out by Nielsen. Thomas, well saved by Chris Woods. With Bright closing in. And Wednesday, very, very unhappy about that, feeling there was a handball. Referee Gunn doesn't agree.
the London side very, very quick to close down their opponents. Thorne's header, not where he wanted it to go. Southgate again. Palmer forward to David Hurst. Shooting position. Oh, magnificent! What a magnificent goal! His return to full fitness, David Hurst marks it in a way everyone on the clock wanted him to. Wednesday's corner, Worthington and Wilson. Wilson to Nilsson. Wilson crosses, and there's David Hurst! And Palace furious, saying David Hurst was offside. They all stood and watched. And what a marvellous return for the young striker. King to Warhurst, back to King. Inside, nice little ball for Paul Williams. Young on him, tries to turn. Back to King, King with the first time cross. Long looking for Hurst. Down to Palmer. by Sheffield Wednesday. Coventry moved up to fifth by winning at Upton Park. The exciting Zimbabwean international, Peter Unlove, setting up Kevin Gallagher for the only goal of the game. Count the crowd is becoming the pre-match routine at Selhurst Park on non-Palace days. Just over three and a half thousand for Wimbledon against Norwich. Scott Fitzgerald putting the Dons one up. Wimbledon, according to their owner Sam Hammam, are currently losing up to five thousand pounds a day. Norwich, you've been going well. Equalised through Darren Beckford, his first goal for the club. Now, wherever they play, at home or away, Wimbledon remain a lovable handful and a great inspiration for less glamorous clubs. Everyone closing in on Andy Clark there and leaving John Fashionu all alone. For the third goal, Norwich didn't make the same mistake. Clark's marker did his best, but Clark opted to go solo. 3-1. Rangers still haven't won at home. The other statistic of major significance, Des Walker's back in business. As for the goals, the impish Gary Crosby laid on the first for Teddy Sheringham, another £2 million man doing what he was bought for. It was Sheringham at the double, Carl Tyler's flick on and a classy finish to a classic near-post corner routine. After a scrappy goal to concede from Luton's point of view, Alec Chamberlain failing to prevent Dalian Atkinson's cross from reaching Kevin Richardson in the third minute, Villa stays their own goal of the day competition. Following Richardson's fourth of the season, three crackers. A flowing move with a thunderous finish by Cyril Regis. That really was vintage Cyril. It was Dalian Atkinson's first game at Villa Park, and he showed the fans what they'd been missing. Powerhouse stuff to set up a spectacular header by Dwight York. Philip Gray missed a penalty for Luton and nearly snapped the bar in the process. Another inch and it would have been just like Tony Cotty's. Finally, goal of the day contender D. Paul Mortimer and an exquisite finish at the end of a meandering sort of run. To score, the ball could only go in one place. And that was inch perfect. Mickey Adams. Crossed in again, Alan Shearer took it well on the chest, couldn't turn away from Barlow. Milligan went crashing in, Barlow still hasn't got it clear. And Oldham have paid the price for some slack defending. Alan Shearer is the man who's punished them. Well, they had two or three chances to get it clear. Andy Barlow and Mike Milligan in the thick of it. But Barlow, in the end, just unable able to force it back to his keeper. And Shearer was in, and Southampton are in front. Kane's throw. Oh, Barrett. Oh, and he's given it straight to Shearer. Oh, and he was almost gifted another goal. Jobson. Marshall on. Rick Holden trying to help it into the path of Graham Sharp. Flowers came out, didn't claim it. Great chance, Oldham level. Nicky Henry's got the equaliser midway through the second half. They've had to toil for it. 
But Oldham's perseverance eventually rewarded. They got the break of the ball inside the box for once. And Nicky Henry was on it. His third goal of the season levels the scores. It's a nice ball played for Irwin. But Irwin's got his problems there against Rob Jones. He wins it in the end. It comes now to Robson. A shot on the turn by him. A wonderful save by Hooper. Now for McClare. Giggs away on the left for it. Here's Ryan Giggs taking on Steve Nichol. Trying to turn him one way. Gets a lovely little cross here. And all off the way there. Can just as puts it in there. And just wide of the post from Hughes. I think this game now is so open, uh, Brian, because although United possibly have the bulk of the half, when Liverpool break, they always look to me as if they could be very dangerous. There's the man from the Ukraine, Kachok is all that will be in trouble for that. He's already been booked. I think it's going to be a red card for Gary Ablett. It is. Spotted uh, Mark Hughes. I don't know what he did, whether he sparked at Burroughs or whether he headed him, but he certainly did something there. And the referee spotted him, and uh, this could be a, it's a record off. for Mark Hughes. Well, we're right on the, on the dead ball line here after this little bit of a tussle here. And if the camera could stay on, and we don't know, we'll see what happened after it. But the better yeah, it's it's a bit of a scrub, but it's when they stood up and hear the confrontation there. Yeah. 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 We're going behind early in the second half at Knox County. Dean Thomas forcing his way through. But they were level within three minutes. Mitchell Sheeran's first senior goal. Now, remember Clive Allen, plucked from obscurity because of injury. This shot didn't make it. But the penalty certainly did. Now, some defending so bizarre, David White couldn't believe it. But he recovered and let Allen volley the kind of first-time goal he used to score a dozen times a season. Afterwards, Allen launched an astonishing attack on manager Peter Reid, saying they hadn't spoken for ten weeks, and he now has to train with the juniors. Their expressions tell it all.